particular friends. So having learnt with uh, Python basic programming, you must be wondering what all Python library should I learn? Based on the applications, there are different Python libraries. As you might be knowing, like Python is a big ocean lake. So you might not come across with all the libraries that are existing, but you can choose based on the application area what you are working with. This video helps you to understand some basic Python libraries that will help you to do your programming or for a application. Let's get into the each of them. Say suppose you are dealing with numerical computing where you have a fast array computations or you have some linear algebra applications or you are working with a matrix. In such a case, the most useful library is NumPy where it focuses on numerical computing. Similarly, on the other hand, if you are dealing with some machine learning algorithms, example, regression, classification, or clustering, or model selection and pre-processing, the most useful library would be scikit-learn. And if you are dealing with tabular data like Excel sheet, or if you are involved in some kind of a data cleaning, filtering, or aggregation, in order to do all your data analysis and manipulation tasks, Pandas will be the library which will be most helpful. Similarly, when you want to do some plots, maybe line plots, bar charts, histograms, or do the data visualization, in such a case, matplotlib would be the most helpful library. And in case if you want to further do the advanced data visualizations, or make a plots like heat maps, generate heat maps or box plots or some kind of a uh, visualizations, more advanced visualizations. Right, in that case, you can go for Seaborn library. Let's go ahead. In case if you are dealing with deep learning algorithms, the most helpful libraries would be TensorFlow, Keras and PyTorch. These are the most helpful libraries or frameworks that will be helpful for the deep learning applications. On the other hand, if you are using some kind of a statistical modeling, linear regression, time series data, hypothesis testing or ANOVA kind of a test, stats model will be the library which will be very helpful. Similarly, if you are using high performance boosting algorithms, especially in Kaggle computations and all. So I will speak about Kaggle computation and all in the coming videos. Right. So there are some Kaggle computations. So and where you, if your focus is more towards a high performance boosting, right, XGBoost is a library which will be helpful. Similarly, on the other hand, the extension version is a light, light GBM, is a gradient boosting again, algorithm only but it it appears to be more faster than the previous one similarly if you are dealing with some kind of a video and image processing applications or if you are using um, object detection algorithms face recognition algorithms OpenCV would be the very helpful library and moving on if you are dealing with some kind of a natural language processing which is right now in boom right so if you are do, working with the text processing, tokenization, stemming kind of operations, these are the operations that come that you will come across in natural language processing. NLTK is the most useful library. Similarly, the other algorithms are in NLP field are SPACI and transformers. So if you are using like pre-trained models like BERT, GPT, for text generation, classification, etc. So in this world of Gen AI, generative AI, so most helpful library will be the Transformers library, which is especially for NLP operations with deep learning. On the other hand, we have other libraries such as Plotly, 
for interactive visualizations where it is web based and interactive plots or if you are trying to develop dashboards Plotly would be very helpful. On the other hand we have Woke and SHAP are the other libraries. Say example if you are working with the zoomable plots and real time streaming and all Woke will be the very helpful library or uh, if you are trying to get into the explainable AI kind of a features where you want to understand how does a model work, SHAP will be the library which will be very very helpful. Say if you are going into the data uh, handling part, so where if you want to save and load ML models, Joblib or Pickle would be the helpful library. Similarly, if you are working with a database interactions, where connecting your Python to SQL databases, SQLAL Kemi is the helpful library. Similarly, if you are creating some APIs to develop models to the web, then Flask or Fast API would be the most helpful library. And I, I forgot to add one more uh, library. If you are working with uh, uh, developing a game and all, so the most helpful library would be. Can you make a guess? Yes, this is a test. So if you're trying to develop a, a game, what is the library that you want to use? Yes, it's a Pygame. Pygame is a one library that will be really very helpful for your uh, game developments. Similarly, other libraries are Kiwi, K-I-V-Y, is mobile app development. So now, having st studied about all these libraries, which libraries are you going to use for your applications? Type them in the comment box. I would love to look at them. And in case if required, I'll make a separate video for it. See you in the next video. Hope this video was helpful for you. To give you to get an overview of different libraries that can be helpful for your different applications. See you in the next video. Thank you.